you need to know what's happening on deadline day around the NBA. Uh, Gare Bear, so your favorite uh, player prop here is a seven game slate. And again, we have to be smart with like where we're putting our money on this day. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny to say this literal seconds after Milwaukee was involved in a four team trade. But when you were kind of looking at this slate, I felt like the game that would be least impacted by the trade deadline was going to be Bucks and Suns because, yeah, DiVincenzo might be on the move and he is on the move, apparently. Um, but realistically, like the top six, seven players on each of these rosters is not going to change heading into tonight's game. So I think it's OK to kind of start analyzing the props in this one. And I think I just want a big part of the over for Giannis's point total. It's set at twenty nine and a half. I know the Suns are a fantastic defensive team, but all I see when I look at this game is a decent script for the Bucks, a script where maybe they're not, you know, blowing out an opponent by 15, 20 points by the time the fourth quarter starts. I mean, I am shocked Giannis played as many minutes as he did in that Lakers game. Uh, I thought he could pretty much sit the entire fourth quarter, but he didn't. And when Giannis plays at least 34 minutes in a game, the last six times that's happened, He's averaged over 33 and a half points per game. He's hit this over in five of those six games. And I just don't see a scenario where this game isn't tight going into the fourth quarter. So I look at Giannis, I look at what he's been able to do recently in terms of scoring the basketball. And it seems pretty far fetched to me that he wouldn't reach this number if this is a competitive game. All right, Nick, hook me up with your favorite player prop. Yeah, I had Giannis over 46 and a half points, rebounds and assists. So kind of along the same line of thinking, as Gary, and uh, if you check right now, that's not available. I assume it'll be back up soon, you know, once everything shakes out with this trade. Uh, it looks like Josh Jackson and Trey Lyles are on their way to Sacramento as well. So that, you know, the Kings, they don't rebuild, they reload. Uh, another blockbuster for Sacramento. If you want to look outside of that Milwaukee game, I like John Moran over one and a half threes. You can get that at plus money, plus 140 at the DraftKings Sportsbook. He has been on a little bit of a cold streak from three. He's just two of his last 16 from deep over the last few games but prior to that he had been on a hot streak he went over this number easily in three straight games i think he's in a really good spot to bounce back tonight uh, against what will likely be a shorthanded pistons team you're sending a couple players out the guys you're getting back aren't going to be available tonight uh, so really good spot for john memphis okay maddie this has been a fun last 15 seconds for me i'm just watching garyan's face react to the raptors trade <laughs> with goran Dragic finally getting moved uh to the spurs yeah i don't think get this, out of uh, here I don't think Add young, baby. I spoiled it for you. Um, yeah, I don't think this move is going to impact player props too much. The game I'm looking at hasn't been affected yet, but we do have to keep an eye on the Knicks. Um, I like an over for points too with Evan Fournier at 15 and a half. Um, it's a little bit contingent on Knicks injury news. So we have Mitchell Robinson, New Orleans Noel, Quentin Grimes, all questionable. RJ Barrett's out. Um, I think this could be a game that goes small, especially if uh, the Knicks centers are out because then the Warriors don't really need to play Kevon Looney as much. And... It seems like Fournier is not being priced up quite enough for Barrett's absence. I think his usage goes up there, too. But if you take Grimes out of the rotation, which is the other key here, then Fournier's minutes become a little more secure also. And part of the problem with Fournier sometimes is he can just not play that great. And the Knicks will go with the hot hand approach and use some of their younger players. Removing Grimes removes one more potential way that Fournier doesn't see the court at the end of the game. So I'm pretty interested in that. Either way, though, I do like 15 and a half points on the over. I just like it a lot more if Grimes isn't playing.